Over the past 48 hours, the world has witnessed something truly extraordinary. Russian oligarch Evgeny Prigozhin, the head of Russia's private military army, the Wagner Group, briefly led a massive armed rebellion after occupying the city of Rostov with minimal resistance. He then struck a deal with the Kremlin, calling off his force of roughly 50,000 mercenaries and agreed to go in exile in Belarus. Although this is a developing situation, here are a few initial takeaways from Prigozhin's failed coup. First, the fact that Putin struck a deal with Prigozhin just moments after calling him a traitor to the motherland is a huge win for the Wagner chief. Very few Russian men have threatened to storm the Kremlin and live to tell the tale. Of course, this is assuming that Prigozhin is still alive by the time you're watching this video. Second, there is an evident leadership vacuum in Moscow. Putin took hours to publicly respond to the crisis, and the Russian army had no desire to put up a serious fight against the rebels. Third, the Russia-led Collective Security Treaty Organization, Moscow's alternative to NATO, which consists of these countries, is not a reliable security alliance. The CSTO did not mobilize any forces to aid Russia in ending the rebellion. Instead, the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, took it upon himself to lead the negotiations with Prigozhin. Lastly, there is always a small probability that the coup was staged by the Kremlin in order to relocate Wagner forces to Belarus and strike Ukraine from the north when everyone least expects it. Admittedly, this is in the realm of speculation, but Ukraine forces would be wise to closely monitor the movement of Wagner troops in the coming days and be on high alert for the unexpected.